Fred threw up last night and it was very strange because we only fed him wet food, not dry food, and we've never seen him throw up his entire meal like that. So I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, butternut squash and rice porridge into his turkey. I don't know if it's going to help. We'll see. We'll see. Um, and then he threw up clear liquid again today. It looked like one of those hairball puddles, but Aaron said it looked like a lot, so I don't, I wasn't there to witness it, but, um, we're gonna keep an eye on him. Uh, if he throws up again, obviously, we're gonna have to take him to the vet and see what's going on. His belly looks a little bit bloated. Um, so all we can do is observe because he, can't talk to me. Good thing is he still has an appetite, so there's at least that. Ooh, sorry Fred, I just spilled all your food everywhere. All right, all right, babe, you ready? Ready for foodie? Yes. Very good. Good mush. Nutritious mush. He's got some rice and butternut squashies. Mmm, that smells good. I would eat it. I did actually eat it. I tried the butternut squash and rice porridge mixture this morning when I cooked it. It was bland, but good. Nonetheless. Hi, Fred. Hello, Fred. Hello, Massachusetts. I had a hard time spelling that state when I was in school. Too many S's and T's.
Don't DM me if you are expecting a response. Only DM me if you are expecting me to read it, because I will for sure read it. I read 100% of the messages that I get, but I cannot respond to all of them. So there, there it is. There is the truth. Hello, Minnesota. <laughs> you do have less S's and T's. <laughs> LOL. Um, you can freeze yogurt. It will. The moisture in the yogurt will lead to crystallization. It will not taste very good. Hi Holly, bye Holly. Hello Vancouver. Ooh, vitamin. Yes, time to eat vitamins. Thank you. So YouTube didn't do anything wrong. Um, it's not really YouTube's fault. Sometimes I literally click go live like seven minutes before I actually go live, so. Susan in Seattle, he seems to be pooping okay. Pretty solid poops. Uh-oh. I hope he doesn't have a tapeworm. I, um, I had a meeting this morning that kind of set the tone for the day and uh, definitely didn't feel good coming out of that meeting. It pointed to a, um, it basically confirmed the culture of my workplace and, uh, made me feel things that I still can't process yet. And so I might seem a little tight tonight. So just warning anybody who is expecting a relatively cheery, melancholic June. Today, today's June is a little bit a uh, tight, melancholic, angry June. So just letting you know the menu here, you know, don't wanna set false expectations, but we have entered the Clean Plate Club. Hi, Missouri. That's true, I did feed Fred some cheese, although I have fed him cheese before and he hasn't like responded in that kind of a way. So I will just obviously stay away from dairy products. For now, I have um, fed him a variety in small doses before, and he's never really thrown up like that. So who knows? Let's hope that it was my fault for feeding him cheese because that's an easy solve. I just won't ever feed him cheese again. But if it's something bigger, Freddy, that would make me very sad, buddy. All right. Let's get cooking. I have been cooking up so many recipes, testing recipes, shooting recipes. My entire fridge now is filled with soups that I've made and I still have more to cook. So I'm trying to consolidate by cooking some of my extra ingredients into soups so I can put the soups into jars so that can Help me organize my fridge space a little bit. I'll show you in a sec what it looks like. As 
soon as I put these soups in. We're gonna wash some kale and we're going to jazz up some butternut squash soup that I made that I think needs more ingredients in there. But for now, here is what the fridge looks like. And we are Wednesday. I still have two days more of shoots to do. It is packed. Um, so hopefully, hopefully we can sort that out. I will be giving food away to some peeps tomorrow, so that's also going to help. Um, remote recipe development. I mean, we, we talk all the time on Slack and we have meetings on Zoom. It's basically the same shit. precious real estate in the fridge. I am going to cook the stems and all. I will just be chopping the stems really fine, but kale stems, although fibrous, are perfectly fine to eat, so I don't see the point in wasting it. When I worked at a pizza restaurant in New York called Roberta's, they had a kale pizza, and we would throw out all the stems, and we didn't even have composting there. And thinking back to that, I'm just like, damn, that was a fucking waste of food. So with kale, you should wash it at least three times in my experience because it can be quite gritty. I like to rinse it with the stems on, then I like to strip the leaves off and rinse it again. And then dump it all out, see how sandy the water is, rinse off the stems, and then rinse off the leaves for a final time. If it's extremely sandy, I even do it four, five, six times total. It just truly depends on how dirty it is. This one doesn't seem too bad. I really like rinsing vegetables with a colander because then I can just lift up the colander and see how much grit has settled to the bottom. And this batch is actually really damn clean. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start ripping off stems now. Maybe we can save some water so that people can stop yelling at me for wasting water. I used to, um, when I worked at Roberta's, we had to like strip kale leaves for hours and I used to come home with like, um, you know that really painful thing where your, your nail basically starts separating from your flesh underneath and it just feels like you gave yourself a huge cut? On um, kale stripping days, that's what I would come home with, just like extreme pain in one thumb. And I would be very puzzled as to why that happened. And then I would remember, oh yeah, I stripped kale for like four hours today. No wonder. I think I, I, think I got paid $11 for that job an hour. Fun stuff, huh guys? Yeah, we don't have a water shortage in the Northeast, but people will just still yell at me for wasting water. Which is fine, they can yell at me. And I do waste water, quote unquote waste, but like Jeff Bezos also wastes our sense of humanity. But, you know, whatever. I'll get yelled at, that means I have privilege, right? That means I'm still doing better than 99% of the people that live on this earth, so. Small price to pay for having running water almost 24-7, huh? Hashtag blessed.
Okay, here's how disgusting I am. I finished cooking at 6, and I was like, I'm going to make the soup tonight. I'm just not going to wash the pot. So I didn't wash the pot. Now we're just going to drop oil in the lentil soup pot, and we're going to make our kale soup. Um, I'm going to be... jazzing up this butternut squash soup that I had to film for work. It's fine on its own, but because I have all these ingredients, I figured I'd just make myself like a one-pot meal and add more stuff in there. So I'm going to reheat this. I'm going to chop in my kale, and we'll just keep adding shit to it until I decide enough. No more shit should be added. How's that sound? one of these slices. Bacon! I don't know y'all. I know some of you are like, I've seen worse, that's not disgusting, but some of the shit that I used to do at work really made my coworkers uneasy. I could feel the unease. And I was just like, ah, I see. I see. like us to take a moment to appreciate this purple kale. The stems are beautifully glorious Halloween colors. Look at that. are telling me. You ran for four minutes, that's longer than I can run. Yo, Eliza, how was the fall? Ooh, a pile of money! I need, a, I need to get my shit together and relocate a therapist for sure. I've been procrastinating too long.
steps today. I don't want to sound condescending, but I am very happy and proud of you. That is more than I've managed to do pretty much any day. Does your therapist take, uh, actually, I don't, I don't even know what mental health care I have now. I have United Healthcare, but I think my mental health coverage is different. I think it's under an, another platform, and I can't even remember the name right now, and they only cover therapists on that network. Sorry. Oh, oh, it's Spring Health. I think I have Spring Health for mental health. really dry that way it doesn't splatter when I put it next to the bacon which probably is my least favorite part of cooking did we? I used to know someone called Claire Bear when I was in college, but I also think Claire Bear is probably a fairly common nickname for people named Claire. We definitely did not go to college together. L O L. Okay, what's next? I have a potato. I'm going to peel the potato.
people without being a total bitch. That I'm not obligated to respond to DMs. Like, it weighs heavy on my mind, y'all. I know I can just not respond, but maybe, maybe the only way to do it is to be a total bitch from the out, from the onset, and just like not respond at all, right? Because if you respond anything, then you give people an expectation that you will keep responding. And when you take away your responses, people then think it's a downgrade and that something's changed. Social media is too hard for me, man. I'm getting too old. Too old for it. It truly only exists for the youngins who can tolerate the ups and downs. knows, but it would it would seem that they do not know. Well, not all of them. But if anybody watches these lives, I think they have to know now. I got was so weird too. Can't stop thinking about it. It's just not healthy for me. I can see why people take social media breaks and delete their profiles now. The world that asks for too much sometimes. cashews and coconut oil with spices in it and seeds like caraway and cumin and ground coriander. I'm just going to brush it into this pot and then all we have to do is give it a rinse, dry it off, and that's that. No soap needed. of the furry friend, yes. I think the older generations always find the younger generations to be ruffians, right? I think it's just a generational gap. Imagine what the even younger generations will do if you think this a generation is outrageous. Oh, this is a lot of kale. I have bought myself into kale oblivion. Soup, 
Soup in the jars. Soup that we are about to remake into other soup. Nah, I can't bake kale chips. It's too hot. It's like, my mom just emailed me today, actually. She was like, this summer just doesn't want to leave, huh? Even when it's like literally autumn months and dates now, still feels like summer. We had a hot one today. Um, just like enough to sweat while you're standing kind of hot. And uh, because I have so much cooking to do for work, I will not be baking of my own volition this week, so. I'm hoping the kale will cook down to nothing because it was taking up so much space in the fridge, but hopefully no longer. Now is the time to put in all of this freshly ground black pepper that I didn't need. Oh, this is the seeded cashew mix that I toasted in the cast iron. It has like so many seeds, you can see it. Okay, this is too hard. I think I'm just gonna eat one. Very good. Okay. Going in with a little bit of everything. A little bit of caraway. Caraway, very underutilized spice. Why don't we use it more? I have no idea. ginger a little bit of turmeric where's my fenugreek where are you at girlfriend I cannot find anything anymore. <laughs> Frankenstein spice jar where I throw in all of my over measured spices for when I'm shooting so I'm just gonna toss it in I guess get rid of that
Bet you I'm going to find the fenugreek right after I go offline. Then I'm going to be very angry. Very angry. Because there's like cake soupy bits on the sides, I'm going to slap the lid on and I'm going to try to get it steaming so that we can lift that all off. Meanwhile, we shall peel and chop this potato. get mad at me, but I'm not going to cook these peels. I just don't have the energy for it. I will still compost them, I promise. What's up with these spots inside potatoes? Does anybody know? Um, I bring my compost to like drop off points like farmers markets or community gardens. New Hampshire. Does it bother you when people inquire about Aaron or Aaron's Twitch? It doesn't bother me when people inquire about Aaron's Twitch because we advertise his Twitch to like send people over there to watch his stream when we play games, which honestly I thought was going to be way more fun, but I am so bad at video games, it is exasperating. But I think when people ask me about like Aaron's personal details, stuff like what he does for work and stuff like that, I don't feel comfortable answering because that's his business and I feel like he should be the one telling you that information and or deciding whether or not he wants to tell people that information. So I tend to leave those questions alone because that's not my place to answer them. 
but if questions are purely about me, then I feel like I'm pretty transparent about responding to all of them. I don't mind oversharing. But not everyone is me. My basil is not going to last till tomorrow, which is when I need it. Very disappointing. It was already like not good quality when I got it too, but alas. Hiding. I think it's just too hot, you know? It's hot already, and then I'm making it even hotter by cooking more. Okay. Flooding did not affect me personally, no. You think I would put this much peanut butter into a pot? You're right. Uh, it's not peanut butter, guys. It's butternut squash soup. Curry butternut squash soup. So there is a lot of spices in this pot right now. We're just making it more meaty with vegetables. Yeah, seriously, if this is peanut butter, it is gonna be the best soup ever. You're right. I'm not cleaning out the jars or scraping them out perfectly because after I finish cooking this, they are going right back into these jars, so no point. I'm also going to add in a little bit of my lentil soup that I made. Uh, I asked you guys on the last live what I should put in it. I ended up putting carrots, potatoes, uh, coconut milk, curry powder, a little bit of gochugaru, aka Korean chili flakes, um, and I mean the real highlight of the red lentil soup is this nut mix here, it goes on top, gives it that nice little crunchy crunch.
put in a little bit of time, why not? I have so much. Probably not going to use it. I mean, gochugaru is red pepper nice tasty. You're not wrong. Am I from New York? Uh, I was born in Beijing and I grew up in Queens. So I guess I could be from New York. It's a very fraught question for me. The where are you from question is not just like a, a potentially racist question for me to feel from absolute strangers. It also puts me into existential crisis mode sometimes if I think too hard about it. Oh my god, no. What did TSA confiscate now? I'm guessing TSA confiscated someone's shit. topping garnish but I just have too much of it and sometimes it just goes bad so I might as well put it into the soup. You know what, let's just put all of it into the soup. I don't want to deal with another bag of random shit. Some of it has already gone bad. They confiscated a jar of peanut butter from me once and I still have not gotten over that and that was probably like five years ago. I hate it. And I didn't put coriander in there because Ground coriander is a highly used spice in a lot of my recipes, so I want to reserve it for actual recipe development. But cilantro is basically coriander in plant form. So I'm hoping it'll give some of that same delicious flavor. sweet peppers. What are those? Sounds good. that they are slightly different varieties. Is that false? Is that fake news? Linda's. But correct me if I'm wrong, or maybe they do not want us to know the truth of the Linda's. But we have we have at least three Linda's in this chat.
Yeah, I was under the impression that culantro is a different, different thing. I don't think I have access to culantro where I live. Maybe if I looked harder in some markets, there might be, but... Is this looking trashy enough for y'all? It certainly is looking very trashy to me. trash -tastic. Oh, did you hear that sound? Listen. Oh, yeah. That's the sound of a successful trash suit. Wish I had bread. I do not have bread. I have tortillas though. Just as good, I think. All right, where are my compost zippies? I need to put you into a bag so that you do not start molding at room temperature. Oh God. It's a mess down here. If anyone has a organized under sink, I would like to know your magic. How do you do it? How do you maintain an orderly under sink? It's a perpetual struggle. small enough sippy bag. Ooh, okay. Mmm. Okay, this smells interesting. It smells like Japanese curry took a turn at the trash bin. Truly has some of that trashy garbage vibe smells right now. Maybe maybe the kale is giving me the fartiness and uh, is turning this literally trashy smelling. But hopefully it tastes better than it smells. Remind me again what it is. It sounds familiar, but I have no clue what it is. And I feel like I should know what Ribolita is, but I do not. And I'm somewhat embarrassed right now, but I'm too tired to feel embarrassment. That's where I'm at. Hi, Jesse. Where in Manhattan are ya? Are you close to a Trader Joe's? People always say they learn something when they watch me and I'm like, how? I'm just throwing shit into a pot and it looks like trash. Uh, oh yeah. Um, I don't know if Aaron's dad watches the lives regularly, but he definitely pops in sometimes. Hi, Vancouver. Oh, it's never a pork chop night at my house. Who, I don't, I don't think I'll ever buy a pork chop unless I have to cook it for work. Pork chops are so hard to cook and keep them, I feel like they're harder than chicken breasts to cook. They always turn out like dry, straw-like. <laughs> Julie really wants MSG. You know what guys, I think I'm over my MSG phase. I've stopped putting it into everything. Sometimes it just doesn't need MSG. It doesn't really work in a lot of the applications and I feel like 
when I want something to taste like fast foody, I add the MSG, but when I just want home cooking, I don't want it in there. So, do I regularly burn in the sun? I, uh, I get tan pretty fast, and even with sunblock, my arms get super itchy. Like, this part of my arm will burn really bad. I also noticed today because I was filming for work, because I had a mask on the entire time in California, even when I was walking outside, I have like this strip of my nose completely tan and this part isn't and it just looks like I have like sunburn on the strip of my nose. Quite hilarious. I'm gonna not think about it too much. Hi Rusty. Hello Rusty. Let's go see what Fred's doing while our soup is cooking. Are you okay, Sue? Wait, let's check on it one more time before I go. Oh yeah. You seem great, soup. Is this a soup or is it a stew now? I feel like this has got to be a stew, right? I don't think it qualifies for a soup anymore. I've ruined it. It has been ruined. I'm not going to make tea leaf salad soon. Freddy, hello, the people want to see you. How are you, babe? You good, babe? Are you good, babe? Hey, baby. Hi. How's your tum-tum feel? How's your tum-tum feel? Hi, Freddy. Baby. Yes. Are you still feeling sick? Mmm. That's the life, Fred. That's the life. Sleeping on my blanket that you scooted your asshole all over yesterday and when I shouted, No! You ran off faster than the speed of light. And today, rolling all over. All over, Fred. Ow, 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 okay. What do you want to say to me? What do you want to say to me? Want to hold your hand? I want to hold your hand. Oh, ow, okay. You don't want to hold my hand, I see. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> you don't like me patting your belly, do you? Do you have a tapeworm in there? What do you have in there? What you hiding? What you hiding? Am I annoying you? Am I annoying you? Oh, this is giving you like the only exercise you got today. It's doing this weird position. I'm gonna keep touching your belly until you bite my hand off. Do, 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 do. Boop. Doop. Doop. Ow. I asked for that. Good thing I just trimmed your nails last week. Lucky me. Ha. Boop, 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 boop. Boop. Boop, 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 boop. Boop. Oh, okay. All right, all right, okay, all right. Oh, he really didn't like that game. That was not a good game for him. All right, we're going to go back to my soup then. Bye, Fred. Ooh, can you see? He left a little indent. Wow, wow. Your teeth do work, Fred. Can you, ugh, oh, the chat always disappears. Hold on, I'll read it. I'll go back and read it. Where is 
is your pot from? This is Cook's Standard. I believe Aaron ordered it off of Amazon like four or five years ago. Um, Cook's Standard. Really good, uh, whatchamacallit. They're like a really good knockoff of that really fancy multi-ply brand. Somebody help me out here. I cannot remember. But, um, this cast iron, I thought it was Lodge, but it literally has nothing written on it except for, uh, Taiwan stamped near the handle. So I have no idea what this is. Yes, yes, this is a ripoff of all clad. You are exactly right. Thank you. And I believe this one was only like 50 bucks, and it's perfect for everything. I do soups, stews, I do stir fries, I do frying. It's great. Very durable. Not prone to burning like my cheap Ikea pots because it is multi-ply, which means there is uh, better protection from the direct heat source. There's more even heating all across. Which isn't to say I've never burned stuff in it. When you walk away for 20 minutes and forget that you have stuff in there, it will still burn, but much less likely to. I'm not sure what size this is, but I can give you a measurement right now because I'm such a kind human being. This is about 11 inches across, 11 and a half. You're welcome. Hi, Caddy. Hello, Christian. I don't know, I had a really weird day. Pretty stressful week. Did you know that if you take vacation, your life becomes even harder before and after you leave? It does not make sense. Vacation is not relaxing. I'm very stressed because I have to uh, go on another trip with Aaron soon in a couple of weeks and there is So much fucking work guys. I Don't know how I'm gonna get it. I don't know how I'm gonna have energy to get it all done, but I will um, Oh, I don't know the quart size guys. I'm sorry. Let me try one more thing and lift it up and let's hope we don't run into disaster and let's peek on the bottom and see what it says. Um, it just says stainless steel 1810 made in China premium grade multi-ply clad. I don't see a quart size, sorry. Try my best though. Can you try to make food with only red and green foods? I'm sure I can, but why would I? That seems like a really stupid YouTube thing that Delish would make me do. Is that enough shade for you? Yes, Budget Eats is still in the editing process. Unfortunately, we just delayed the live date by another week because things are chaotic, guys. Hang in there, it's gonna come out sometime. I think the most peaceful I've ever been was taking that week off and filming my own shit and actually having time to like take care of myself and just breathe and not do anything and not feel compelled to eat every single thing that was on my map like we did in LA. Um, it's just like traveling is stressful and traveling with other people is stressful and having to see that person 24 seven is stressful. But I think I've gotten better at it now that I've had to live with Aaron 24 seven for like a year and a half during the pandemic. Which isn't to say that I'm not ever a bitch on these trips. I get really fucking bitchy sometimes on these trips because when I'm stressed, I just turn into full on bitch mode. And trips and traveling really bring out my inner stress ball, so. 
<sighs> What's the sriracha sauce that Aaron really likes? So I'm not sure. Not sure. We have shark sriracha that I really like, but what's the one that he really likes? I mean, he, it, this is not sriracha, but um, he really likes this. It's sambal. Apparently, you pronounce it ulek. Uh, I've been pronouncing it wrong the whole time because I was saying sambal olek, but it's apparently ulek. Uh, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but this is much more potent than sriracha. Chili, salt, acetic acid, potassium sorbate, blah, blah, blah. It's basically just straight up chili and salt. So it does not get more pure heat than this. Yes, Fred is FIV positive. Mm. He definitely has some stomach things going, that's for sure. You know, one thing that has enabled me to enjoy the process more when traveling is filming because I feel like whenever I'm taking photos or filming, it is a meditative state that I slip into where I let myself just be the observer instead of the overthinker. So as soon as I see something visually intriguing, I swerve the camera over and I just let the image overtake my experience of the moment. And it kind of washes out my mental processes and it, it kind of just like cuts out the fat of, of my mental stress that is in a way very manufactured by myself and artificial so I do think documenting makes me a calmer person I don't I hope Fred doesn't have an ulcer oh dear I've lived in New York when I immigrated here when I was seven in 1997 and I went to college for four years in Pennsylvania and then I went to China to teach for a year and then I came back to New York so yes for the most part I've, I've spent, spent a whole lot of my life in New York um, we went to Venice Beach we didn't really check out the beach we walked through it to get food it was very carnival-y feeling very like New York City Union Square meets traveling circus. What about making purple and orange food? Ta-da! Purple and orange food. Um, bye, MBR. Okay, I think we're done. I'm gonna turn this off. Let's see if the potatoes are... Okay, no, never mind. Damn, the potatoes are not done. Should have cut them smaller. Might be. Trash soup takes this long to cook. Where was my life in PA? I went to Swarthmore College, so mostly there. Favorite horror movie, The Babadook. That was the first one that came to mind. 
it goes deep into grief. And if you've seen that Black Mirror episode called Be Right Back, it's basically like a parallel t tale. It has like very much the same themes and context and backstory. Very different endings in a way. One is more hopeful than the other, but for sure The Babadook. Love that movie as a horror movie. I really love the soundtrack and how it integrated so well into It Follows. I'm not a horror movie person at all, but It Follows was like quite a cinematic experience for me. I also saw that one in the theaters and I almost never go to movie theaters, but that was one where it really helped for me to see it in the theater. Um, that boy, I haven't had this channel for two years. I only started this channel in February, but maybe you've seen some of my videos on Delish. Um, but thank you for watching. I think the soup is going to be sweet and savory, which is going to be the best of both worlds. Um, 7 a.m. in India. <gasps> you are a early riser. Swarthmore is a nice place to be. It is filled with greens. How does ginger react with my body? Um, okay, I think, I don't think I react poorly to it. I think uh, it really helps when I'm having very bad period cramps for me to just boil some ginger water, ginger tea if you want to call it, literally just water and ginger together simmered until it's nice and spicy. And it really helps the cramps for me to drink that. So to all the folks out there who get really bad cramps, you might want to give ginger water a try. Pretty cheap, pretty easy. How does one become my bestie? Uh, Aaron is my bestie. I don't, I think you just have to be okay with how mood swingy I am and how bitchy I am and how my ideal, my idealistic self turns me into a very disappointed, bitter human being and having to deal with high expectations all the time. It's not an easy job being my bestie. I don't recommend it. Um, Three thirty-four a.m. in Italy. Go to sleep, <laughs> chef. Go to sleep. What are you doing? I'm also just cooking disgusting slop. There is nothing for you to learn here. Ooh, that's hot. We're gonna turn that down. It smells like it's caramelizing. <gasps> that just happened. Thank goodness I just washed this top today. Otherwise, that would be disgusting. Melissa, I see your message. I will approve it. I think we're running a little low on the mods tonight. Surprised we haven't run into any trolls yet. Oh, somebody just approved it. We have a mod in the room. Thank you, mod. <sighs> Simultaneously trying to exercise. What's the what's the favorite move tonight, Alco? I missed having a week off where I could just exercise whenever I wanted during the day. That was really nice. Now I do not have that luxury. Now I have made myself unavailable to take care of myself until after work, which is around 7 p.m., at which point I am too tired to do shit for myself. 
And then that's when I start spiraling in a negative pattern towards self-neglect, which then turns into self-hate, which then turns into bitterness, which then turns into overall depression. And as my high school teacher, Mr. Scardino, would say, you've now identified the problem. Now be a problem solver. Words to live by, Mr. Scardino. Thank you for that wisdom. Exercising first thing in the morning, I could. That's what I did on the trip. But it is very hard because how early do I have to wake up? And if Aaron's not awake, then I don't want to wake him up by slinging around, you know, weights or movement. And it's just, I'm not, I'm not that proactive, y'all. I just, oh, so it's funny because on weekends, I have no problem waking up early. I wake up latest around 8.39. But on weekdays, it is so hard to wake up. And I do think it is psychological. I think it's truly just me not wanting to wake up for work. And so I just have a tough time. I think, I think a lot of people experience that. I just don't want the day to start, you know? Are you ready yet, Potato? Oh yeah. All right, I'm gonna give these five more, five more minutes. I think the potatoes will be done then. Um, apparently, we did a um, DNA test, and then we ran it through this program called Prometheus. And both Aaron and I have this genetic predisposition to react negatively to certain B vitamins and I don't remember which one I'm not supposed to be taking but I think B12 is one of them I don't know I don't know guys chocolate bar and then I would eat the whole bar and it would put me to a peaceful sleep. So I guess it does work, but I just overdose. It's the same thing with me and gummy vitamins. I can't have those around. I just overdose on them. I don't eat them like medicine. I eat them like food. <laughs> Magnesium supplements. I don't think I have. Don't worry guys, I've already had dinner. This is just a trash soup that I'm making so that I clear out my fridge. I don't eat dinner this late. I've also, I had to shoot two recipes today for work, so I've been eating throughout the day. It's also been a lot of union meetings and team meetings, so I've been stress eating a lot. It's just like, as soon as I go back to work, I already feel myself getting unhealthy. Trying to find the balance in the midst of Overwhelming chaos is hard. Sleep is the best thing for chronic pain. Yep. Do you have MTHFR? I think that might be it, actually. I don't remember, though. It's been a while since we got it analyzed. Ooh, you got your first Delish magazine. Is it the weeknight dinners one?
Is it this one? Hello, Australia. My life made simple. You have many requests, my dear. Ooh, 20 minutes of exercise. That's more than I do. If I could do 20 minutes every day, that would be nice. Okay. Let me show you how cute this is. Um, how do you feel being Asian in the age of COVID? I feel fine. People are arguing over the origins of COVID and I'm just like, everybody should get the fuck over where COVID came from and we should maybe just concentrate on how to solve it. And uh, if there is an evil scientist out there who's doing their best to spread a global pandemic to wipe us out, then good. I hope you do better next time. I hope you wipe all of us out fast because we are slowly destroying this planet and I just wanna get it over with. Look at this pizza though. I made this pizza. I didn't, I wasn't really going for the cheese pull look, but they wanted the cheese pull look, so we went for the cheese pull look. As usual, I don't really have the final say, but it's my pizza. Um. Oh, and here's dumplings. Ta! -da! I made these dumplings too. <laughs> Melodramatic gothic answer. <laughs> Did I satisfy? Um, and this is not my recipe, but Justin, our food editor, made birria tacos for this issue. Pretty fucking fantastic. Looks fucking delicious. Saucy, brothy, beefy. You get the magazine either by buying it on newsstands or you can subscribe on delish.com for it. And it's a much better deal because you get unlimited access to recipes online as well as the four quarterly issues. I think the current price is like 20 bucks for the whole year versus if you buy this on newsstands, it's like $13.99 per issue. So if you know you want all four issues, the best thing to do is to subscribe for the year. Unfortunately, you are now in the third quarter, so you might be getting this one and another one. You won't be getting the previous two. Um, and then I made some sauces. The chimichurri is by Lena, but the rest are developed by me. And I really like this halal cart inspired white sauce. It is really freaking delicious. Hello, Detroit. Did you develop your recipe at home before? Uh, no, everything was done in the Hearst Tower before COVID hit. I'm gonna turn off the heat. I'm gonna keep the lid on, trap that heat in there, let it carry through cook. Let me show you one more. Let me pick the prettiest photo. Ooh, uh, Mackenzie made this spicy lentil doll. It looks really delicious. Um, yeah, same thing that passed through my head. People still buy magazines? Turns out, no, they don't. Uh, I don't know why we decided to go with a print magazine initiative this year, but we did. We have some features on how to cook less with meat. Um, a lot of meat-free recipes in this issue as well. But obviously also not an insignificant amount of meat-based recipes. You know, everything in balance, something for everyone. Did 
This looks good. I also like to feel pages, but you know, for the most part, I don't think people read anymore. Some classic chicken and potatoes deal. Nice and glossy. I actually haven't read this before today. It got sent to me like maybe two weeks ago. Oh yeah. This is like a uh, Lao inspired flavor profile on your roast chicken. It's by Sang. He has a YouTube channel. It's pretty great. Everybody should go look him up. Um, he has some fun recipes. He is a Lao chef, so he has a lot of Lao cuisine going on and I don't think I've been to a Lao restaurant in New York, and I wonder where they are. But maybe one day I will make that. Oh yeah, and Lena made this sesame crusted chicken parm. It's absolutely delicious. We actually developed this recipe like pre-COVID times and it never got published, but now it's out. two previous issues were way prettier like they just had a lot more character to them um, I think we've had a different designer for every issue and that's why there's like variation in both the aesthetics and the quality um, but I have to say my favorites definitely these were just glorious like brunch food who doesn't like brunch food? Um, you got cocktails. You got some dose de leche, little pop tart things and cinnamon buns. Um, I don't think you guys would have it in Italy. I don't think we do it abroad. It makes me very sad. We have like a Georgian style cacciapuri everything breakfast pizza so good the brunch the brunch issue was like amazingly shot and all the recipes were delicious justin made this green shakshuka we got some porny ihop pancake maple syrup drizzle also by justin he's kind of like our inadvertent pancake master now um Oh yeah, and Mackenzie made these shortcut croissants. I haven't made them yet, but they look damn good. Yes, these are more like cookbooks. That's why they are so expensive. It's There's like almost no ads in there, so it does feel like a soft cover cookbook in magazine format. But it's really, like these two issues absolutely shot so beautifully. Um, if you guys watch Julia, Julia has a segment in each of these issues where she like rates the best of, and in this brunch issue it was waffles. The cookouts we did promos for when we went camping. Um, gorgeous Spumoni ice cream cake. Like, my lighting isn't doing it justice right now, but this shot is amazing. It's like a cross section of the ice cream cake. Um, we had some really gorgeous photography in this one. I All I can say is it looks better in person because my cell phone resolution is crap and my lighting is unideal. Um, if you guys want, I can auction these off, but I can't, I also can't ship internationally. I just can't guarantee the uh it getting to you i only ship domestically unfortunately but the yep is pretty good oh man 
And we did like a burger spread with like different fillings. Okay, time to eat soup. Soup, soup. Soopity doop. Whoopity doop. Okay. Hi, Fred. What you doing? <laughs> around his ear. It makes me wonder what's hiding in your ear hole. What's hiding in your ear hole, Fred? Are they all whispering in there? You know he loves it when his little teethies come out. Count that doll as a Indian recipe, I guess. Yeah, we don't have Indian recipes. It's also like part of the discussion too is after all that big discussion last year about appropriation and food media and figuring out what to do for that. I think a lot of us got scared of developing recipes that are not from our own cultures. I think we're starting to recover from that, but obviously we still need to do a better job of reaching out to freelance food and recipe developers who are maybe Indian. We just haven't found anybody. Um, that's just part of media. There's no representation. And even when you are being represented, you are superficially utilized to somehow only do food of your culture, and then that turns into a, another issue. Um, but during the pandemic, I've done some uh, Indian and South Asian recipes, like a khichdi and, what was it? I did like, damn, I can't even remember the name of the recipe now. But it was basically like little fried wheat crackers that you then pile lots of delicious sauces on top of there and then I put pomegranate seeds and then those fried crunchy little snacks it was really delicious um I'll have to find that recipe because I was really proud of that recipe I really enjoyed eating it so much it's very hot you're gonna have to wait three hours for me to cool off before I taste this. Fred, you're just being a loaf on the floor, bud. I like my potatoes cooked until they can be pierced by a spoon. And I think these are there, but not, I, I feel like I would go even longer on the potatoes, honestly. 
Okay, I'll let you know what this smells like right now. Just give me a sec. Let me collect my thoughts. You can definitely smell the cilantro, but it almost smells like cooked celery now. Definitely isn't hitting as soapy as it would if it were raw. There's a nice kind of warmth of steaminess that you usually get from smelling soups. It's not a particular flavor. It's just more of the ambiance of a warm soup steaming into your nostrils. The kale almost smells like cooked rice. There is something very fragrant about this whole mixture, the same way that when you unveil that new pot of steamed rice, it just like hits you in your soul, enters through your nose, but pierces right through your being. Yes, chopped. Yes, it was chopped papri, I think. Thank you. That was the other recipe I was trying to think of. Um, there was salt, Linda. It was in that mishmash uh, leftover spice mixture. But also there was salt in the original butternut squash soup that I folded in here, so I don't think I need it that much more. But I'm pretty sure this is pretty well seasoned. For the amount of spices I put in there, I really cannot smell all of them but it smells nice and balanced. So promising. Fred, what are you doing, bud? Are you trying to give us the cold shoulder? Mmm, holy moly. Okay, I'm in love with this. That potato is so freaking creamy. And then the kale is nice and tender, but it still has a little bit of like a tender crunch to it where you can hear it reverberating off of your teeth, but it gives you no resistance. It's kind of like really thin seaweed and miso soup where you could feel yourself biting through it, but it doesn't fight you and your jaw doesn't hurt. It's like the perfect way to feel like you're eating where you are exerting energy and effort but meeting almost no resistance. From the butternut and that really nicely creamy spoon tender potato, this almost tastes cheesy. Almost like creamy like the way a mac and cheese is creamy, but with a little bit more chalkiness and grittiness because there is no cheese in here. It's just vegetables but if you cook vegetables long enough it turns creamy bye Fred there's a slight hint of spice in there but it's not like prickly spice it's just like really warming spice I think it's coming from the black pepper for the most part and a little remnant of that curry powder that was in the original butternut squash soup I love the kale in this. It tastes like, it tastes like really thin, gentle seaweed. Mmm. Okay, I might eat more than this tiny bowl. <laughs> it is way better than I thought. Wow. Woohoo! Go me. It is time to put it into jars now. And as I put it into jars, I will see what doesn't fit and I will eat it. delightful activity 
This really eased some of my stress from today, so hope it brought some peace to you as well. You know how they have that, um, there's like the streetwear that has that really annoying text on all their hoodies that says anti-social social club? I feel like we're the unsocial social club. You know what I'm saying? It's like we're being social, but not. We're not anti-social, we're just not social. Yeah, it's not a pretty color, is it? I don't advertise anything falsely. If I tell you it's trash soup, my friend, it will be trash soup. Here, I got some on a napkin so you can feel grossed out by it. Haha, <laughs> that's gross, isn't it? You're welcome. Get used to it. Some foods just look disgusting, but they taste delicious. One more reason to open up to new experiences that you feel immediate rejection of because you don't know what you're missing sometimes. I definitely would not buy this if I saw it, probably. Although never say never. Now that I know how delicious mucky trash stew can look, and B, I might just buy it the next time I see it. Aaron is currently not home. He cannot taste this. He is out and about. Wow. This also ensures that I get to eat vegetables, which I never do for myself during the week because I'm so busy cooking random shit. So I'm very proud of myself for doing this for myself today. I did not want to cook more, but I also did want to cook more. And I'm glad I chose to. More jars, please. making mooncakes. Do you guys know how intense making mooncakes are? There's a reason why they cost $8 a piece. They are very expensive because they are very hard to make. That's it, folks. I have no more content or things to say. Well, that's not true. I always have things to say. Do you have things to say? What are mooncakes? They are this Chinese dessert. It's a food item that you eat during mid-autumn festival, which is coming up soon. It's usually the end of September, beginning of October. And they are this basically super dense caloric treat where it's like a flour pastry on the outside holding a dense sweetened paste on the inside and it could be anything from lotus seed which looks kind of white 
to red bean, to mixed nuts and dates, to taro. There's some newfangled flavors out there that's like durian and pandan and chocolate and Nutella. The best ones, in my opinion, taro, durian, lotus with double salted egg yolks. You must try a moon cake with a double salted egg yolk because the moon cake itself is so dense and sweet and thick. You need that hit of saltiness that's kind of crumbly in the middle to really get all the notes of deliciousness. Otherwise, it's just going to be really overwhelming. I believe each traditional moon cake, which is about the size of my palm, can be anywhere from like 600 to 900 calories. And there have definitely been enough mid-autumn festivals where I eat like two a day on top of my normal food. So they are very dangerous because um, if you acquire a taste for them, they are very fattening. But because I can eat a whole jar of peanut butter in a night, uh, it is not a very outlandish activity for me. Besides, it comes like once a year, so it's like, whatever. It's kind of like my Christmas. But they are very expensive. You usually buy like a gift pack of four, and it can cost anywhere from, the cheap end is like 20 bucks for that four pack. The high end could be like 50. The moon cake trade is really intense. Now the pro move, is to wait until mid-autumn mid festival is over, especially if you don't celebrate it with family and friends. You wait until the holiday is over, and then it's kind of like Valentine's Day candy. It goes on clearance after the holiday passes. But even on clearance, it's not that cheap. It's not like 75 to 90% off, so. Hi, Jason. Um... Do you make songs then? I don't know. I'm not well versed with the food traditions of Chinese holidays. I've never made songs myself, and I don't think my mom has either. Those I don't think are as hard to make as mooncakes are. Ice cream mooncake? Those exist? Holy shit. I've not heard of such a thing until now. I'm old, y'all. Thanks for watching, Laura T. Now June proceeds to scrape away at the pot for the next 38 hours. Oh. The ice skin mooncakes aren't ice cream. They're just, the, the flour pastry on the outside is made of rice flour, and so it has this almost like dewy, frosty look to it. It doesn't look brown. It has that kind of like Snow Queen and Winter Wonderland look to it. But I don't think there's ice cream. I've never seen ice cream filled mooncakes. Have you? It wouldn't surprise me, like if mochi, if ice cream mochi exists, I bet somebody would eventually make a big ass mochi ice cream and just market it as a moon cake. Why not? Pastry shell on those Godiva ones? 
see, I don't think a mooncake is a mooncake unless you have a shell enclosing the filling. I refuse to accept. Not trying to be a gatekeeper, I'm just saying. No need to call it a mooncake. fell onto the stove top and now it's a chip. Hmm. I got a kale chip after all. Happy accidents. Mooncakes in Hong Kong, huh? I made some trash soup. Repurposed some leftover soup. Ricky, are you teaching people how to make roti? I gotta say guys, whole wheat flour and baking is underrated. Why don't we do more of it? Spiced peanut butter coated kale chips. Okay. Is there always yogurt in non? Or can non just be as simple as flour and water? And probably a little bit of yeast, yeah? I also just don't make soup that often. And soup is so easy to eat that I'm just like, I don't want to freeze this. So the thing about freezing soup is, it's mostly liquid. It's gonna take a shit ton of time for you to defrost it, and it's just not worth it for me. Yes, I did do a recipe for kitchen.
Does it have the brand and the germ in it and everything? So I go to Patel Brothers and I see the um, different flowers all the time, and I've never really bought them. We'll love to give it a try sometime, though. Uh, soup. I usually recommend people eat their leftovers within three to four days. But I've had soup be okay for up to seven days. It depends on how clean your jars are, how clean your work surface is, how much bacteria you introduce to it during the cooking and packing process. So it's all dependent on different variables. I don't even know why I packed the whole thing away because I literally said to myself I wanted to eat more of it. So I'm gonna take this small jar and I'm going to fill big jars to the top and then I'm gonna eat whatever remains. That feels good. Okay, I'll try out the flower sometime. Thank you for the tip. recipe that I made so all, all of my Indian viewers can tell me what I did wrong please <laughs> because I'm sure it's not quote-unquote authentic but I personally love the recipe That's the recipe. Open to feedback. Let me know how I fucked up your cuisine. Yes, I have dried kale from the hot weather alone. I left it in my off oven and I forgot about it. And the next day it was like crispy. I was like, what? Hi, Freddy. He didn't like it. You guys asked for Fred, so he's here. Lots of kale and butternut squash and some coconut milk and some bacon. Hi, Fred. Do you want to smell it again? Still a no. Too many spices for him. Ooh, that chicken sounds good. life folks let me move you closer to Fred oh god my knees hi Fred the people love you uh, hold on I'll link you to the kitchen recipe it's probably because we spelled it differently there's so many different types of romanization so Here you go. Mmm. Big yawn, Fred. 
Wow, that was a look of very, very concentrated disgust. Yes, in the first Budget Eats, I made like a paratha looking thing with like mashed potatoes inside and rice flour on the outside. I didn't even know what to call them. But apparently parathas are the closest things. Honestly y'all, trap soup is the best soup. Wow. You really don't like the soup, huh, Fred? Wanted to move away from it. I don't get my spices in bulk. I don't go through them that fast. Ooh, I just got a piece of bacon. And it tastes so good. Wow. Wow. I amaze myself. Okay guys, uh, to be honest, I'm probably gonna go eat another jar of soup while editing some footage, so thank you for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Remember, if you're stressed, nothing matters, we'll all die one day. Memento mori. Stay peaceful if you can.